Hello, I'm JW, and in this video we're looking at supply types, as in the electricity supply that arrives at your house, and the various methods of earthing which you can be provided with. Generally you don't get a choice in the matter, but uh, there are several different ways that it can be provided, and it's pretty much essential to know this uh, before installing any electrical equipment or systems in the building. This uh, particularly applies to the UK, it may not apply in other countries, although of course the uh, principles are similar but it's fairly likely the terminology and exact installation methods will be different. So if you're not in the UK, by all means continue watching. However, do bear in mind that uh, this is for the UK only. Other countries, of course, have various different systems and arrangements. Now, however the uh, power is supplied to your house, it will inevitably, of course, come from a transformer, and that will generally be either outside on a pole or in a cabinet somewhere maybe out of sight, but uh, in any case it will transform the higher voltages, generally in sort of 11,000 or 6,000 volt range, down to a more sensible uh, 230, which you can actually use inside your house. And uh, in terms of the high voltage side, we're not going to be uh, dealing with that obviously, but uh, the uh, transformer coming in, you'll have uh, two wires for a single phase supply, and we can call one of those zero, and the other one 230. Now, of course, uh, in this particular case, the transformer is just sitting there, it's not connected to anything, so uh, although there's 230 volts between these, giving these uh, 0 and 230 is uh, no particular reason for that. We could have easily put 230 here and 0 there. It's uh, a completely isolated and unconnected system. But uh, in the UK, and in fact in most other countries, that's not entirely how it's done, because all of the systems in main supply are referenced to the ground, as in the earth outside. And this is done at the transformer by simply putting a connection from the one side of the transformer there to an earth rod or stake or other metallic items in the ground. And this means that uh, the voltage between uh, the neutral line, as we'll call this one, and the actual ground itself is effectively going to be zero, but they're going to be both at the same potential, obviously being linked together via the connection here at the transformer. And conversely, the uh, line up here. It's going to be 230 volts between here and the line conductor, and also 230 volts between there and any part of the ground as well. And this is why if you happen to be standing on the ground, touch the live wire, then of course you'll get an electric shock because the uh, 230 volts will then flow through your body, through the ground, and back to the transformer. Touch the neutral, nothing will happen because again they're at the same potential, so there's no voltage difference there, so you won't get a shock. Now these wires of course will uh, continue into your house or whatever property you've got and you'll have the line coming in and of course the uh, neutral coming in as well. And uh, this is where the uh, differences in how the earth is provided come about and there's essentially three main ways that are used in the UK. There are more than three but uh, the three we're going to look at are by far the most common. The others are only used for very specialist applications, not likely to be coming across those in a normal domestic property. Now the first one of these is by far the simplest and all you get from the electricity company are just these two wires. So you've got your line here and of course your neutral as well. And the earth connection is really up to the uh, individual customer to provide and this is done simply by an earth rod in the ground. This is typically used in certain rural areas, and uh, but it can be used, of course, uh, in theory anywhere. And uh, so you get these two from the supply company, the earth is your responsibility entirely. And of course you have a wire from here going to the earth connection within your installation. Now this is called a TT system, T standing for earth in French, and the two T's of course are uh, over here and over here. So there's a earth rod in the ground here, the actual earth itself, and another one over here again in the actual ground itself. So in the event of any fault here, the current will flow, if there was a fault between the line and the earth, the current will flow through here, through the earth rod into the ground at your property. The return path will then be via the mass of the ground itself, and back to the transformer or the uh, neutral point there. Now while this arrangement is certainly the simplest, it does have one fairly major flaw, in that uh, if a fault like this occurs, the actual current that flows is surprisingly small, because although these copper wires of course will have a very low resistance, 
or impedance. The uh, return path includes the general mass of the Earth, which of course is going to have a resistance uh, certainly in the many tens of ohms, even in the best case scenario. And uh, the current can easily be calculated there. If we had, for example, a resistance here of, say, uh, 20 ohms for the complete uh, loop there, then at 230 volts, the uh, fault current which will flow here is actually only going to be around 11 and a half amps. Not exactly very much, and that might trip a 6-amp circuit breaker, but certainly if you've got a uh, sort of 32-amp circuit breaker on a socket circuit, 11 and a half amps, of course, will do nothing. And in these particular installations, uh, additional devices are required, typically an RCD, to uh, trip, obviously, when the faults occur to earth. Older systems had uh, voltage-operated uh, circuit breakers, which, although did actually work, have a number of uh, significant flaws as well. I have actually done a separate video on those, uh, explaining uh, that in some detail. So, although this is a fairly uh, easy-to-provide system, it's certainly not ideal from the point of view of uh, via the small fault currents. And again, you're going to therefore rely on an RCD or similar device to actually trip in the event of a fault between line and earth. Certainly not ideal. Now, the uh, second system is, uh, again, used on typically older type supplies, mainly due to the uh, type of cable used. And as well as the line and neutral wires coming in, you also get a third wire or connection, which of course is the earth. And that will actually be a separate wire, which goes all the way back to the neutral point at the transformer. And so you've got uh, three wires coming in. This is typically provided by a uh, two core cable with line and neutral. And then the outer covering of the cable is the earth, and that's uh, usually a lead covered cable. And typically that's buried underground. At this end, it's pretty much the same. You've still got that uh, connection directly into Earth at the transformer. But you've got the additional connection here of a separate wire for the Earth all the way to your property. And uh, this particular system is called a TN at this end, as you've got the ground directly connected to the uh, neutral here. And as these are separate wires, it has an so that's a TNS arrangement. Earth and neutral are connected together here, but they're actually separate by the time they get to your property. This particular arrangement has certain advantages in that if there is a fault here, say between line and earth, the uh, whole loop is basically all metallic, so the uh, current would flow here is going to be very substantial, easily enough to cause any circuit breaker or other device to open immediately. The other benefit is on older supplies with the lead cables is that the uh, cable itself uses the outer covering as the earth, and that being metallic, it's actually buried in the ground. So as well as the connection here, you've actually got the whole cable itself buried underground. So the actual cable is generally in physical contact with the ground itself. Although we haven't obviously shown that here, but that is uh, typically the case. Generally, though, you won't find this on newer supplies simply because the uh, lead cable is uh, generally not manufactured and it's extremely expensive, so it tends not to be used even if it was available. Now, the third type of supply, which is by far the most common on new installations and uh, pretty much anything that's been built in the last 20 to 30 years, is uh, a system whereby, again, of course, you have the uh, line and neutral wires coming in, and at the point of origin in your house, you will have an earth connection but it's not actually a separate wire, it's actually connected to the neutral at the uh, intake position to your house. The cable going back to the supply is only a two core, so you've got the line and the neutral. And although you get a separate one inside the property, as soon as you go outside there or from the uh, actual supplier cutout, it's only this two core cable, there isn't any other separate conductor there. This particular system is called TN, again, because it's the uh, earth neutral connected here. C, because at this point the uh, neutral and earth are in kind of combined cable, it's the same piece of copper. And then there's an S, because once it gets to your house, again, they are separated. So it's TNCS as the type of installation. Now, this is also uh, typically referred to as PME is protective multiple earthing. The two things are not actually directly comparable because uh, TNCS just refers to the type of cabling and arrangement of the earth there. The PME part is, uh, as the name suggests, refers to multiple earthing, 
and it's generally the case that along the length of the cable in various places underground there will be additional connections from here down to earth. Exactly how many and where they are of course depend on the actual arrangement from the supply company. But uh, the principle is that you're only getting a single cable coming in with two conductors, one of the line and then the other one is the combined neutral and earth. Like the TNS system, the uh, instances of a fault occurring say between line and earth or line and neutral will result in a fairly substantial amount of current flowing and again that's easily enough to cause circuit breakers and fuses to trip or blow within a very short time, which is of course generally what you would want. The uh, possible problem with this system is where you may have a fault occurring in the cable and if for example the uh, neutral cable became broken at some point this will mean that uh, you're now using the what's remaining of it, the neutral and earth, as your alleged earth. And of course you don't have an earth connection and it can lead to uh, metal items within the property reaching mains voltage or certainly near that. And again because it's all earth back at the other end this can actually be very dangerous because uh, anyone touching any metal items in the property could of course get a severe electric shock. Now in a normal house the risk of this cable becoming broken without this one is actually ridiculously small because generally properties are supplied with concentric cable which uh, if you looked at it sort of end on you would have the centre core as the uh, line conductor. Around that you would have obviously the insulation. And then the neutral and earth combined is actually separate, usually strands of wire which actually go all the way around the outside. So really to break the actual outer coverings here, all of them, it's pretty likely you're going to actually just slice through the whole cable at the same time. And of course the cable has the uh, outer insulation covering there as well. So it's extremely unlikely that this would actually occur inside a normal property. However there are certain circumstances where this uh, scenario could actually occur. And that for example would be if you had a outside marquee or something set up in the garden and you're just running a normal extension cable or other cables out to that which of course would not generally be of this construction, it would have two individual wires and in that circumstance is that one of them could become broken without the other. That's why you would not generally want to have this type of supply used to supply say outdoor events or sort of catering tents and that kind of things. And for the same reason uh, you don't want that supplying uh, metal framed portable caravans because again if the uh, cable to the vehicle became damaged you've basically got uh, line there and no actual earth connection whatsoever. The frame of the caravan could become uh, any voltage up to the mains voltage and of course someone just stepping out of the caravan onto the actual ground could of course receive a fatal electric shock. Same applies to marinas and other high risk environments. But generally for a normal house not going to be a problem and uh, say the instances of breaking a concentric cable on the outside only and not in the middle is really ridiculously unlikely. So in summary then that's the three types of uh, earthing which you're likely to have uh, provided to a property. You don't generally get a choice in the matter, it's going to be uh, one of the others and certainly for a new one it's going to be the uh, TNCS option. And uh, T2 of course is the one where you have to provide your own earth rod. That's uh, not something you would generally want unless it's a specific application say such as a caravan or some outside uh, facility. TNS uh, is what you would get generally in an older property we have the separate earth and neutral conductors coming in. Let's say not generally used now because the type of cable used to supply that isn't generally manufactured or used. And TNCS is where you have the neutral and earth are actually combined all the way up to the point it enters your property and then it's separated only at the point where it enters the building. Now in terms of the typical supply impedance or the external loop impedance that's between line and earth, it will vary considerably between these three types. TNCS supplies would generally expect it to have an external impedance of in the region of sort of 0.35 ohms, in many cases considerably less than that. Not normally above that, although there are certain older or certain installations where that may be exceeded by a bit. Uh, TNS systems generally would be uh, a bit higher than that and anything up to around 0.8 ohms will be considered uh, perfectly normal. Again it could be quite a lot lower than that, it all depends of course on your distance from the transformer and the exact type of cabling used to the property. TT supplies on the other hand uh, depends on the 
quality of the earth electrode that you just installed. But even on a really good system, you're still going to be looking in the region of sort of uh, 20 ohms or uh, even more, possibly up to sort of 50 or even 100 ohms, depending on the local conditions. And in the case of the uh, TT supply, it's absolutely essential to properly test the earth electrode to make sure that it's actually have a suitably low impedance. If it doesn't, then it's putting the entire property at severe risk because pretty much any fault to earth could, of course, not trip the uh, protective devices if the impedance was too high. And if you have a uh, RCD installed, which of course on that type of supply you certainly should have, here's an example. Now, this is a 30 milliamp RCD, and in theory, the uh, maximum loop impedance to cause one of those to trip is actually around 1600 ohms, which of course is absolutely colossal. However, in practice, you wouldn't want anything up that kind of level because uh, the very fact that it's just stuck in the ground means its impedance is going to vary considerably with the weather and how wet or dry the soil is and the time of year and so on. So generally speaking, the maximum value you'd want to be looking for is around 100 ohms. As I say, that can obviously vary considerably just simply due to uh, local conditions. So that's a look at the three types of earthing or supply types as provided in the UK. And how do you find out which one you've got? Well, you could ask the electricity company, although in some cases that's not actually as reliable or easy as you might imagine. But uh, the TT, of course, is really obvious because you've only got the line in neutral provided by the electricity company. There's no earth connection whatsoever. And in that case, it's up to you to install the proper earth electrode or other means of earthing and obviously test those to make sure that they're within the required specifications. TNS, if it's supplied underground on a lead clad cable, is again fairly obvious because where the cable comes in, just before it goes into the cutout or fuse, there will be a connection on the outer covering of the cable, either with a soldered connection or a spring or a clamp or something, and that will be hiding the earth from the outer covering of the cable. TNCS uh, is generally on newer systems, and in those the cable comes straight into the cutout and the, uh, of course, line in neutral will come out of there, and the earth will be on the side of the cutout generally, and uh, just providing a separate terminal on the side. And of course, those are linked together via the uh, neutral and earth inside the cutout. However, if you do see that, don't automatically assume it is a TNCS, because there are a number of TNS supplies where the three cores are separate coming into the cutout, and then you've got the uh, line neutral and earth terminals on the cutout in a very similar way to a TNCS. The only difference, of course, there is that inside the cutout, the neutral and earth are not connected at all. But of course, that's not going to be obvious whether it is or not without actually opening it. And obviously, you're not supposed to do that. That's only for the electricity operator. So until next time, thanks for watching.